On June 26, 2000, the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II left Southampton for New York. Among the passengers on board was a car encased in a huge glass cube. The majestic Maybach 62 was sailing for its own birthday, the world premiere at the Regent Hotel on Wall Street. The plot of the whole thing was reminiscent of the story of the Titanic, and the drama of course was played out albeit without shipwreck or loss of life. Today we are going to talk about the most magnificent failure since the beginning of the century, and it was made by a corporation that regularly makes mistakes, but has a reputation for being infallible, probably because it admits and corrects all its mistakes. Today we will talk about a particularly big miscalculation, from which as time has shown, very correct conclusions were drawn. Mercedes-Benz's grandiose attempt to bring a forgotten elite brand back to life was massive in everything from the money invested to the consequences of market failure, never before had Stuttgart received such a painful slap in the face. The first return of the Maybach could well be called a German remake of the Edsel disaster. Up to the 40s of the last century, Maybach was probably the most prestigious automobile brand in Germany, a real German Rolls-Royce. However the Second World War severely damaged the reputation of the company. In the war years, Maybach was the main supplier of tank engines for Wehrmacht. After 1945 the production of Maybach had not been renewed, and in the 60s the company came under the control of Mercedes-Benz. Until then the 3-beam used only the production capacity of Maybach, not even remembering about the brand name. The revival of the brand began in 1997, when at the exhibition in Tokyo, Mercedes-Benz showed a conceptual vision of the future Uber flagship. Note, that the Tokyo concept car created by the Frenchman Olivier Bully was called the Mercedes-Benz Maybach. On top of the radiator grille, the three-beam star proudly rose instead of the double letter M, the emblem of Maybach. The car thus turned out unbelievably catchy, accentuated and modest, given the reputational problems over the W140 body and the new political course adopted in Stuttgart, such intemperance, such a fountain of luxury was surprising. It seemed that the Mercedes-Benz Maybach arrived in Tokyo, without a clearly defined status. In the fall of 1997, no one was talking about the possibility of serial production. The official position, Maybach is a demonstration of design and technological solutions for future flagship models, it is an extremely vague formulation. The most interesting thing happened behind the scenes. In the second half of the 1990s, the British industrial group Vickers decided to get rid of Rolls-Royce and Bentley. Everyone must have heard about the epic tug of war between BMW and Volkswagen, over the elite British brands. A lesser known fact is that Mercedes-Benz was also in the bidding, but then it suddenly dropped out of the race. Why? Couldn't handle the financial demands, scared of the competition, unlikely. There is an opinion that someone very influential, at the top of Mercedes decided to show, that we can do everything on our own. It is not good for the Germans to mess with the British heritage, an elite, hyper-luxury brand can and should be its own. It is easier to ask what was wrong with the 2002 Maybach. And the answer would be difficult, the engineers and designers of Mercedes-Benz built a car, that was superior to the S-Class in every way. The W240 body was only a 12-cylinder twin-turbo gasoline engine, only displacement could be different 5.5 or 6 liters, even in basic version the cars were equipped with their suspension airmatic dual control, two separate systems of climate control, built-in refrigerator, heating of everything and an incredibly advanced at that time Bose music system. Maybach was everything the technology of that time was capable of, the base model could reach 100 km per hour in 5.1 seconds in absolute silence and tranquility. The production Maybach, or rather two models 57 and 62 at once, resembled the Tokyo concept by Olivier Bully as much as possible. Numbers and indices meant the length of the car in decimeters. The design developed the theme of a modest redundancy of the 140 body, in the development of which the French designer also took part. Then retrospectively, Maybach would be accused of lack of taste and inferior style. In 2002 it did not seem so, both Maybachs successfully coped with their main task, they looked much higher, richer, more magnificent and, accordingly, more prestigious than any Mercedes-Benz that in fact, was to be achieved. Maybach was not modest with the price, when the first Phantom from the BMW era, appears on the market in 2003, it will be clear that the base price, of the Stuttgart flagship is much higher, the minimum admission ticket to the world, of Maybach is $390,000 for the base model 57, the Phantom was $40,000 cheaper. With the big 62 of course, the price difference was even greater, the long wheelbase Phantom EWB came later, in 2005. Yes real Hyperlux buyers, are not used to reading the menu from right to left, that is starting with the price, but if the difference in price, for no apparent reason exceeds 10%, even a millionaire will involuntarily think. It is a long and tedious task to enumerate, 
all the pompous equipment of the Maybox, there were such shocking for the beginning of zero years options as transparent electrochromic roof with blackout function or retractable TV set with 20 inches diagonal for rear passengers. It was possible to order not only a refrigerator, but also a humidor for cigars or an aroma ball dispenser, or for example, a granite finish. And still the most fantastic option of the Maybach never became reality. It's a pity because it was a whole car. Do you remember the concept car Mercedes-Benz F400 carving presented in 2001? This bright, technically advanced sports car with active suspension, Maybach designer Olivier Bully proposed to include in the list of optional equipment of production 57s and 62s. The idea is this. The owner of a Maybach is usually bored in the back seat if he wants a drive. There is always a unique sporty Mercedes waiting in the garage for the soul, which is not available to anyone except Maybach owners. The reason for the failure of the Maybach is difficult to name. In fact, there were many of them. Each of them was not fatal separately, but in the end they collapsed the grandiose construction as a whole, like dominoes. We will dare to call the main mistake the choice of the trademark in the beginning of the 90s. Nobody except those who are keen on automobile history remembered brand Maybach. When people started digging into historical facts, they suddenly came across a chapter where Tigers, Ferdinands, and Maybachs were mentioned in the same sentence. Betting on a forgotten brand is risky, perhaps it would have worked, Mercedes-Benz marketers have a talent for convincing the world of their own infallibility, but a year after the debut of the 57 and 62, the new Rolls-Royce Phantom appeared on the scene, and it became clear at once, the Germans would lose the soccer match, to the English, or more offensively, to their sworn friends from Munich, the new owners of the super luxury brand. The new Phantom was better in everything, from the name, whose importance and prestige no one needs to prove to anyone, to the price, much more interesting than Maybox. The Phantom exposed all the problems of the Maybach. This is the W140 platform, which by the beginning of the noughties, was already showing its age. It is also the design, in which everybody saw only bloated S-Class. Don't forget about external factors. In the second half of the noughties, difficulties began in the Daimler Chrysler Alliance. Mitsubishi gave problems. There was a loud scandal with Fuso Trucks Department, about which few people remember now. Smart has been bugging out on its own without assistance. By the way, in 2008 the global financial crisis happened very casually. Oh yes, there was also an internal factor. In 2005, S-Class W221 appeared on the market, so progressive automobile that Maybach had difficulties against. The background of flagship Mercedes with radars, night vision system, all-wheel drive, pneumatic or hydraulic suspension. The S-Class has actually become the strongest independent brand. Something, or rather somebody had to be sacrificed, and Maybach got under a hot hand. Will it become a classic? With a circulation of about 3,000 copies, it's only a matter of time. And though none of the Maybox of the first convocation has reached even the age of a young timer, we can already see the complete disorder and vacillation in the prices, both on the domestic market and abroad, and speculation is a sign of great interest. The lower border starts at 50,000 euros for an ordinary 57. Sellers put more rare and exclusive Zeppelins for 100,000s. It is not clear who needs it, but there are ads. The story of the first Maybach revival is not only a high-profile fiasco, but also a textbook example of how to recognize and correct mistakes, the Mercedes-Benz management made the right conclusions. As the separate trademark, surpassing by head and shoulders the status of a three-beam star, Maybach has stopped its existence in 2012, but just three years later, a sub-brand Mercedes Maybach appeared, which more than successfully sells top versions of the S-Class, funny, but in fact the business model of Maybach has not changed much, simply in Stuttgart they corrected market positioning and price, and it worked right away. Ten years ago, the Stuttgart accounting department lost an incredible $440,000 on every Maybach sold. We believe that for seven years on the market, the models of the Mercedes Maybach sub-brand have more than compensated for all the losses. We should not forget one more unobvious, but important consequence of that story, it was for the Maybach that the Mercedes atmospheric V12 was turbocharged, and then that engine was brought back to the S-Class, the S600 and S65 AMG versions received it, during the W220 generation restyling in 2002, the total circulation of these cars is negligible, on the scale of the world revolution. However, Pandora's box was opened just then, the armaments race, or rather, power armament, unleashed by Stuttgart 20 years ago, is still going on, it has given the world a lot of cars, which sometimes devalue the existence of supercars, and it will end only with the sunset of the gasoline era. Recall, the S65 AMG had 612 horsepower and 1000 newton meters of torque. This was before the iPhone and Facebook, before the Bugatti Veyron, before all shoes turned into sneakers, and music turned into rap, before TikToker without a Lamborghini, ceased to be considered little more than a success. 
we assume that the boost potential of that motor has not been unlocked until now. To make such a phenomenon the norm, already for the sake of it, Maybach should have been resurrected. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.